Welcome back to our channel, fellow tabletop enthusiasts. My name is Ambitosis. Today, we're diving into the deep world of Foundry Virtual Tabletop. It's a platform that has revolutionized the way that I myself play. While the Pathfinder base system has a lot of customization already, these just add a little bit of extra flair to your game that might impress your players or make running your game that much easier. I'm not gonna be ranking them in any particular order, but for those of you who stick around till the end, I'm going to be sharing my favorite one. What module might be a game changer for me might just be a nifty novelty for you. So grab your dice, pull up a chair, and let's take an exciting look at Foundry Modules. Number 5. Token Action HUD this is an awesome module that takes the attributes from your character sheet and puts them in this handy bar at the top of the screen. It lets you access your strike, actions, everything in your inventory, your feats, uh, spells if you have any. You can roll your skills from here. You can add any conditions or effects to your character that you normally would have applied. Uh, keep in mind here on my screen, it shows not a number for the first strike. That's just a bug that's getting fixed in the next couple days. We just had an update to Pathfinder and they haven't quite caught up yet but you can see I can switch my versatility damage type and everything and if I was to make sure that something was targeted and uh, bring up my attack here everything works just how you'd expect there's really not a whole lot more to say about this other than the fact that it just makes things a lot quicker you don't have to open up your character sheet to actually access your attacks or spells or anything like that we all know that screen real estate is a big deal especially for people who are playing on lower resolutions so this just lets you get your sheet off screen in case you have more pressing things that you want to look at. Number four, PF2E Doraco UI. I'm going to go into my configure settings here and you can see that I've actually got a dark theme uh, showing here for the entire application. You can set that there. You can see these little round conditionals around dings here. Uh, it doesn't show along the left. It actually shows in a radial around. Uh, you can change your character sheet color. So mine is actually set to blue because I just like the blue rather than the classic red. You can set this little colored banner up here to like a frosted glass as a UI mod. Pretty much everything that this thing does is visual in nature, but I just like the clarity of the chat cards here, you know, showing the person's avatar with their name and player name and everything. It just ends up being a lot cleaner overall. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite UI mods that I've seen so far. Number three. PF2E modifiers matter. What this does is it adds this cute little card down here and it shows you exactly what modifiers were used to arrive at the final value. When you're trying to teach new players, especially to Pathfinder, and highlight just how big of a difference a plus one circumstantial bonus can be, you can see that when you actually crit or miss or flank or do something that makes the difference between a miss and a hit, it will highlight for you in bold. This can be really useful to highlight to players, especially newer ones, why these modifiers actually matter. Number two, PF2E Workbench. Now PF2E Workbench is responsible for a lot of the heavy lifting for the automation in the Pathfinder 2E system. You can do things like mystify uh, the names of creatures when you use uh, like token modules to bring them out and give them different names. You can mystify things like spells when they're cast because by default, uh, players are not supposed to be able to identify spells that are cast unless, you know, it's on their spell list or they have a certain feat or something like that. There are reminders that you can put down. For example, I personally like it so that players cannot actually roll their attacks unless they have something targeted. Uh, so I do that through here. There's also a hero point handler where you can actually make a keybind so that you hand out hero points to people and then it starts a timer for the GM and reminds them, hey, it's time to hand out another hero point. It's been an hour, that kind of thing. One of the things that Workbench has saved my ass on multiple times is in the world automation settings. So when a character normally is knocked out, they're moved before the person that knocked them out in initiative order. This is something that I always forgot to do and uh, PF2E Workbench can do it for you automatically. You can do all sorts of auto roll things is here as well. I like to do the ones that uh, handle the conditions for me. Like um, it automatically assigns the dying condition, you know, dying to if they're crit when they were uh, wounded zero when they first went down for the first time. As a GM, if you use this module and go into people's character sheets, you can see under skill actions that it lists a bunch of common DCs and also uh, actions that they can perform. This module does give players a lot of control over what uh, automation settings they themselves want to use. So have them go into the options when they first start your game and uh, check off which options they want and which ones they don't. Number one, PF2E target damage. 
And now for my favorite module. The reason I love this module so much is in all my years of running D&D, handling AoE damage and saving throws and keeping track of which monster rolled what has always been the bane of my existence. I'm going to have Gwen selected, target two Mitflits by holding shift and hitting T, and then casting the spell through the target UI here. Both the reflex saving throws for each of the Mitflits were added as targeted basic reflex saves. If I was to click each of these and roll them, it would show the results here. Once the damage is rolled, it even shows a handy little UI here where it highlights which damage type each of the different targets should take based on the rolls they rolled earlier. Now you might be thinking, this is great, but it only works if my players actually actively target the mobs that would be affected by their AoE spell. Well, let's go back and do it again and assume that they didn't do that. I'm going to have Gwen cast Electric Arc with no monsters targeted. But what I can do as a GM is target each of these two mitflits by holding shift and using T, and then adding them to here. Just like before, the reflex saving throws for the targeted midflits have been added to the check proactively. All in all, if I'd have to pick one mod that saved me the most time overall, it would be this one. So there we go! There's a quick overview of five of my favorite modules for Pathfinder 2nd Edition for Foundry Virtual Tabletop. There are a lot more modules that I am a huge fan of that are system agnostic, so stay tuned for a video about that. Remember everybody, Dream big, roll bigger, and I'm going to see you in the next adventure. Now I'll start the melody on the organ.